showcasing someone special. So take a look at these videos taking over the internet of Tony Atkins, known as the Dancing Doc. Healthcare worker in Southern California is helping the youngest patients with his moves outside of the OR. ABC News reporter Tom Yamas introduces us to the Dancing Doc. Dancing healthcare workers putting smiles on the faces of children. Well, they say laughter is the best medicine. And one medical assistant from California seems to agree. He's a pediatric neurosurgery physician's assistant named Tony Adkins. Give it up for the dancing doc, Tony Adkins! Keep going, big arms, having fun, I'll write that down. So cool. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Looking like a zoo in here, whole crew in here. What it do in here? They got lost my mind. Loose screw in here, then I walk outside. And everybody looking at me while I got them all in my sights. Picking them off, taking them out, looking like daylight in the night. And I'm killing so many if they really want to get involved. And everybody fall off in the elevator. Now I'm Bray Rice in this. It's like I'm rice and take a bite. It's nice and I have a nice time with it. By the time that it finds the way to the right side of him, not even a high nigga save him. Must select the finger to you, imbeciles. Tell me what's been getting into you. Envy will kill you. She said I'm a gentleman. I admit a lot of women set up on my item men. I don't give a damn like I auto with no time. I've been feeling like the opposite of work that's a work and it never been a purpose to mean to me. I just do what I love and it works for me. So I'm freaking every check and put the money in the What's up, you guys? It's Adana. I am having fun here dancing, y'all. And if you are not ready to have fun, then you've come to the wrong place because that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking to Tony Atkins, you guys. So this is another True Life series. If you haven't already done so, let's take a pause. Go ahead right now, subscribe to my channel, and follow me on Instagram at on the PA. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, I am going to be introducing you guys to Tony Atkins. Some of you may know him as the dancing doc, but what many of you may not know is that he's actually a PA. Yes, it's amazing. And it's amazing because I'm a physician assistant um, that is able to do all these things when normally it's just a, it's a, a doctor that does these things. But as a physician assistant, I'm able to do so much uh, with my kids, working with the team of doctors and nurses. And it's amazing. And all the nurses in the hospital love it. What? What? <laughs> excited about that I think that is so dope because it goes to show that PAs are doing some really great things out there if you have not heard about this guy he is a neurosurgery PA and he's out in California doing it big with those he's a pediatric neurosurgery PA so he's there with the kids and you know really sick kids and you have to have like a big heart and um, kind of like a strong mind as well to do that. I mean, you have to be really smart because it's neurosurgery, right? So um, I'm excited to introduce you guys to him. Without further ado, please, you guys, here is Tony Atkins. Let's hear what he has to say. Hi, my name is Tony Atkins. I'm a physician assistant, also known as the dancing doc, and this is my true Life. So I became a physician assistant uh, when uh, back in October of uh, 2012 I went to University of Washington uh, Physician Assistant School. I uh, was there for about two years, uh, grew up here in South Los Angeles uh, and then came back uh, to uh, Los Angeles after uh, my completion of my school uh, and started uh, doing uh, orthopedic spine surgery. Uh, so the reason why I chose to become a physician assistant, it was, um, you know, it kind of fell on me because I was originally going to school to try to go into medical school, but then um, after kind of like thinking about it, I was getting a little bit older. So, and I felt that, you know, becoming a physician assistant was getting me where I wanted to be. Uh, I was able to change my jobs whenever I want to, um, can go into uh, different professions and do different things all at the same time. So that's the reason why I chose uh, physician assistant. Uh, so always, um, once I was a little kid, you know, a lot of little kids, they always say, I want to be a doctor. I want to be a doctor for kids. So, you know, since I was a little kid, I always thought, you know, I want to be somebody that's going to take care of kids. 
um, when I got older and I would wanted to go into medical school, um, I decided I wanted to become a pediatrician. Uh, so once I got into PA school, I still wanted to um, work with kids. Um, I did my undergrad in neuroscience, uh, University of Riverside. So I always wanted, I was interested about the nervous system. So once I got out of PA school, I really wanted to be either in neurology or neurosurgery. Uh, so that's that's when I um, uh, sought out after I completed orthopedic spine surgery. Uh, the job came available across the street at the Children's Hospital of Orange County uh, to work in uh, pediatric neurosurgery. So how you get f uh, physically, uh, mentally, uh, mental and spiritually into getting to working with kids is you know in the beginning it was tough because uh, you see a lot of kids that don't make it. Um, you see a lot of bad things that happen to kids. Um, so it's based, you know, you have to have a balance between having uh, time to yourself as far as family life or whatever you like to do, as well as, you know, uh, working out. So I work out a lot and I love music. Uh, so those are things that kind of take me away from all the things that I see throughout the days, throughout the weeks. Because um, you see a lot of unfortunate things with kids that uh, kind of transpires and we get um, some of the worst cases um, in, in Orange County uh, area uh, because we're a trauma center, so we take care of a lot of these kids. So the history of how uh, the dancing doctor uh, stuff kind of started uh, was, you know, I had a, one patient that had childhood leukemia and then after he beat childhood leukemia, he had, was left with a lot of different things that kind of affected him as far as um, headaches and um, he had something called Chiari malformation, uh, a lot of different things. So I um, kind of approached it um, as, you know, working with him because he was like depressed. So since he was depressed, I kind of one day I went to him and we tried. To, I tried to do something to kind of liven him up. Uh, first I started playing music and then I started acting kind of silly. And then one day I started dancing for him and then he got up to start dancing. So then his mom recorded it. And once she recorded it, it kind of just went on from there because she put it on social media. And then from then on, I felt that since I got him to break his a cycle of a depression, then I'm gonna use it for all my kids if they would like to dance with me or do anything kind of still pretty, feeling uh, pretty much silly all the time uh, working with the kids and the parents love it as well because they see that I connect with them on a different level. So uh, once it kind of went viral, it was, I think it was one uh, it was in my feelings challenge. One of my patients challenged me and said, you know, can you do this? And I told him, of course. <laughs> so I did it within 30 minutes. And within that day, I got like 100,000 views. And within the first week, it was at 2 million views. And I was blown away. And from that, from that point, um, it started going so, it started rapid, you know, going everywhere, you know, people from other countries are commenting on me, on my video, um, my Facebook uh, page went from probably like nine, 900 followers to a five, over 5,000. And once you get 5,000 on uh, Facebook, it kind of cuts off you accepting or uh, uh, doing anything to gain any more friends. So they cap you at 5,000. Um, my Instagram went from probably, oh, I would say it's about 600 followers uh, to about 10,000 within a week. Uh, so it kind of just took off so fast, so quick. And, you know, positive reception of it all. I, I love it. You know, it's been amazing. Uh, so, you know, it's... It's okay to receive the positive attention, but at the end of the day, my the whole premise of me doing the things that I do is to basically make uh, my patients and families to feel comfortable. 
because you coming into the hospital already has a bad connotation. And then you come in to see a neurosurgery. So it was like, whoa, what's really going on? So, you know, the way I receive it, it's great. I love it. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's about how I treat my patients. Um, this is what I do, you know, daily, all the time. So I love the positive response. It's great. I love it. You know, it's amazing. You know, it's amazing how one person can affect the people's perception on different things. And, you know, medicine um, already has, you know, it already has a lot of negative things on it because it's, it's like a, a distance of patient and provider so i'm trying to shorten that little gap because it, a lot of patients don't think that providers have fun but we do we have fun all the time and a lot of things don't get recorded a lot of things that we put on social media um, it's just for me somehow it kind of got to social media and then now people are seeing wow this really happens it does it happens everywhere uh, so, um, there is some negative things that have kind of come about just on social media. People are saying things like, uh, this is the reason why, you know, we have to wait two hours. <laughs> so, sometimes I, they, these trolls, you know, to me, it doesn't really bother me at all. You know, I, I kind of let those things kind of go to the side and don't worry about it. Uh, so, you know... Uh, Everybody has their their views. Um, I'm not affected by it because I, I guess I've, I've grown to have tough skin. Um, I was in the military for a bit. Um, and then, um, so I just, uh, I'm used to negative things. Being African-American, you get negative things. So I, I don't care about it. It's, it's fine with me. So what I want to personally come out of this attention is um, other healthcare providers to kind of think outside the box when they're uh, taking care of their patients, uh, either that being, you know, dancing or singing or just like uh, goofing off with their patients, just a, a different way to connect with their patients. Because uh, we can give medicine and uh, treat different things, but we need to think about the full patient, uh, them as a whole, as well as their family that are involved. The most difficult part of my job is uh, taking care of uh, kids that are newly diagnosed tumors um, that have been uh, chugging along with a bunch of different red flags and, and then we see them in the ER because they have uh, different things going on. We get an image and it's a really bad tumor that uh, less than a year life expectancy as well as uh, uh, kids that have a non-accidental trauma that are uh, hurt uh, due to a family member or someone close to the family. Uh, those are pretty tough as well. And the most rewarding part of my job is uh, being able to take care of kids and, and being able to interact with the families, uh, laughing and, and crying with the families. Uh, and making the kids smile and, you know, and seeing the patients as well as their family uh, once they uh, go home and then I see them like at Disneyland or somewhere out in public and they're thanking me for the excellent care that I gave them. And it just, you know, it takes my breath away that, you know, they took the time to approach me and kind of, you know, it's, it's so rewarding in those, that instance. Uh, my final message um, and inspiration, so the inspiration that I have every day when I go to work is, you know, it's this one little uh, tagline that I put on the end of my, my email, um, and it's by uh, Irma Bumbeck, uh, and it basically says, uh, when I stand before God at the end of my life, I would hope that I would not have a single bit of talent left and could say, I used everything you gave me. Um, and with that, it rings home every day. Every day I walk into the hospital, I think of this and know that I'm going to do my very best that day. Um, and I'm going to take care of everybody the same way, uh, regardless of who you are. Um, and that's the end of 
my life story. Thank you. All right, so I just want to say thank you so much to um, Mr. Atkins. Thank you so much, Tony, for just taking the time out to do this True Life series. You know, I'm sure people got a lot from it and just got to kind of see what it's like to not only like be, I guess, in the limelight, I guess you could say, or, or that path to virality, but also just what you deal with on a daily basis when working with these kids. And I learned something, I, or I, it's not necessarily that I learned something, but I'm taking something away from this, which is talking about where you were like, every day, um, you know, do your best, you know, and you know, at the end of this all, when God sees you, you want to be able to say like, I've used all of the talent that you've given to me. And I think that's something that some of us don't do on a daily basis. I know I don't always do that. Um, I'm not always giving everything my all. Like sometimes I, I want to be a little lazy and be mediocre, but like we're called to do better. We're called to be better than that. And so I'm really excited about that. You know, you reminded me of something and I really want to take that and hone that as I go throughout the rest of these clinical rotations and then the rest of my career as a PA. So thank you so much for that. You guys, please go right now, hit up all of Tony's um, different social media handles. Uh, I will leave a link for them, but go, Hit them up, follow this guy, support him because he's doing big things for the PA profession as well as for um, all of his patients and the families that he's just encouraging on a daily basis. So thank you again, Mr. Atkins. Thank you so much for sharing your story. If you haven't seen any of my other True Life series, please go again, hit up my search bar. You can see that there. Follow me on Instagram at Adana the PA and leave your comments in the comment section below. Um, if there's something that you want to see in another the true life or if there are comments or questions that you have uh, for Mr. Atkins or you know you want to talk to him on I don't know Instagram go ahead and leave that in the comment section below and you know try to get those comments to him thank you guys so much for watching I mean let's like let's give a tribute to the dancing dog and like get this thing going and head out of here with some dancing right let's Let's get a little music. Can uh, my DJ? Looking like a zoo in here, whole crew in here. <laughs> All right, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll talk to you guys. Loose next screw time. in here, then I walk out in sight, and everybody looking at me while I got a ball in my sight. Picking them off, picking them off. Just sort of, can you got me? Just free flowing. See how stiff I am? Oh, well, it can be. We can we can deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> I think. You people are sick. Keep trying, Carl. Keep trying. Okay. <laughs> Maybe Can't not. Fight the Maybe feeling. not. Maybe not. Can't fight the feeling. We'll leave that to an ad break. Who <laughs> 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 <laughs>